Welcome to Demo Day, where young innovators take the stage and showcase real-world projects to a global audience. At Weequal School, students learn to become innovators, teaching each other each week through their creations. Weequal App has thousands of novel and useful projects born out of our students' strengths, interests, and passions. But Demo Day is more than just a presentation. It's a celebration of innovation, collaboration, and the power of young minds. Join us on this incredible journey of inspiration as we witness the the next generation of problem solvers and leaders. From Harvard professors to industry experts, our demo days attract incredible guest speakers who share their knowledge and ignite curiosity. Whether you're a young innovator looking to showcase your creations or a family seeking an extraordinary learning experience, Demo Day is here for you. Together, let's create a world where young minds flourish, ideas come to life, and innovation knows no boundaries. Join us for an unforgettable journey of learning, growth, and discovery. Welcome to Demo Day. So if you don't know, my name is Isla and I am 11 years old. And my project is about three things, water consumption, posture, and sleep. So a lot of people, you know, are always telling you these things like, you got to get enough water and you want to stand up straight and you need to have enough sleep. But have you ever thought about the actual health consequences of if you don't do that? Well, in this project, we are going to be going over these things. So first is water consumption. Um, one of the surprising facts that I learned about when I was writing this article is that humans are made up of about 60% water. Um, their brain, a human brain, is composed of about 75% water. So we need water to think and to function. Um, and so Staying hydrated is very important. Um, but um, everyone knows that, right? You're always getting told that. Um, um, so we are going to talk about um, what are the actual consequences of not drinking enough water. Well, one is that you it leads to less energy. Um, a worse mood, and predictably dry skin because you don't have enough moisture. Um, a brain can even temporarily shrink um, from, uh, for an, uh, because of the lack of water and because it is made of so much water. Um, so how much water do you actually need to drink? Um, so there's a common saying that you need eight glasses a day. However, don't take this too seriously. Um, the amount of water that you need can change a lot depending on your weight, your age, and your climate, the, and the climate that you live in. Um, and so a good way to see that you are drinking enough water is wait for it to see how dark your urine is. So this is um, a kind of a weird thing to pay attention to, but it does come in quite useful. So if you don't have enough water, then it will lead to darker concentrated urine. Um, but if you do have enough water, then your pee is going to be um, more of a light yellow. Um, so I have found just as an as an example, that my healthy water consumption is around five, uh, four to five glasses a day. Um, so I eat a lot of fruits and vegetables, mostly fruits, and they consist of mostly water, um, some more than others. So I get a lot of, um, I, I hydrate a lot from that. So the next thing is posture. Um, so have you ever told, hear someone tell you, sit up straight or stop yeah, stop straight? Yeah. Um, well, um, but have you ever thought about what bad posture can actually do to your health? Um, well, to find out, um, let's keep reading on. Um, 
so first of all, posture is, if your posture is not good, then um, it your body has to work harder to keep you upright and balanced. Um, by working harder to do this, it can cause your muscles to become tight and stiff and inflexible. And just because you're less balanced, it can make injuries and accidents more likely to um, happen. Um, but that isn't a big deal. It's just temporary, right? Well, there are lasting consequences. So even though slouching may seem like just a hard, harmless habit, um, bad posture can cause your joints and ligaments to wear out faster um, and cause faster wear and tear. Um, and it can, bad posture can lead to back pain and headaches. Um, and so also, have you ever thought about what it does, what slouching does to your lungs? Um, well, if you are hunched over, standing or sitting, it gives your lungs less area to expand and can temporarily limit your amount of oxygen. Um, and so now that we're talking about why you should not slouch, let's talk about why you should stand up straight. Well, one thing is that it improves your mood. If you stand up straight and tall, then it can make you feel more confident. Uh, whereas if you slouch, your body can be tricked into feeling more um, less confident. Um, so stand up straight because there's no reason really not to. The next thing is sleep. So one thing that we're going to be talking about is sleep. Um, and how much sleep that you actually need. So adults need about seven to eight hours of sleep um, a night and kids need a, about 10 to 12 hours of sleep, which can vary. Um, so there, keep in mind, there is a difference between how much sleep you get and also the quality of sleep you get. So um, you might think that if you go to bed really late and then wake up really late, you are still getting the same amount of sleep as if you go to bed really early and wake up really early. Um, well, there are consequences to that. So if you go to bed really late, um, like, I don't know, 2 a.m. in the morning and then wake up at like 12, um, then you're not getting as high quality of sleep. Um, according to ChatGPT, um, the highest quality of sleep is between the hours of 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. So this means that if you do go to bed at a super late hour, you're going to miss out on a lot of that high quality sleep, which can be used to de develop long-term memories and just function well. So it is important to get enough sleep and also enough high quality sleep as well. So another part of getting enough sleep is having a good sleep routine. Um, so if you're changing when you go to sleep, um, like drastically every night, then it can make it hard for your brain to know when it should wind down and when it should be expecting to go to sleep. Um, so this can make it so that it's harder to go to sleep and impact the quality of sleep. So um, this goes into why you should have a sleep routine. Well, if you have a sleep routine and you go to bed every time at at the same time and wake up at the same time, then your body will know, um, then your body and brain will know when it is time to go to sleep and it'll be much, much easier. Another thing to think about is no screens an hour before you go to sleep. So while this may seem um, like it's unnecessary, um, Having screens right before you go to bed can 
actually impact how easy it is to go to sleep. I've had, I've experienced this force firsthand personally. One thing is that last night I stayed up trying to finish this article um, and I was looking at the screen and I didn't get very good sleep last night. Um, and so, um, so your the way this works is that your brain sees the screen and um, it thinks it, and the light makes it think that it's daytime. So it's not going to expect me to go to sleep yet. Um, and so if you go an hour before bed without much light or without screens, then it can um, make it much easier to go to sleep. So instead of maybe watching TV or YouTube, I, I gotta fix that, um, you can engage in other activities before bed, such as reading a book or I like to take a bath. So in conclusion, Staying hydrated, maintaining good posture, and getting high quality and enough sleep is very important for your health. Um, while it may not always be fun to keep these habits in mind, it is important. So stand up straight, drink up, and prioritize having well-rested nights and you will be a healthier and happier person. Thank you. And in the article, you can see all of the resources. Whoops, the baby. You're gonna make a great mother someday, Isla. <laughs> Wrap it across. Real quick, do we have any math whizzes here who can do some quick math on presentation times? Isla, count up the number of projects that we're doing today. How many are we doing? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, and six, including mine, I think. So that's five. And then we probably forgot one. So let's assume six. All right. Yeah, let's 10 minutes on each question. Oh, yeah, that's our buzz. Project two. So seven. You said eight? I counted eight, but I'm less positive about who's presenting. Let's assume eight. Give ourselves a little buffer. All and right. We've got how much time? What time is it? Um, um, it is eight. 20 minutes in. Yeah. And we got yeah. seven yeah. more projects. So what's 40 minutes divided by seven? Go. Um, um, oh, wow. That's hard. It's not divisible by seven, actually. 35 is divisible by seven. Oh, well, go ahead it's and vote. It would be 35 and make it five. So we, it's not divisible by seven at all. So what do we got? Five minutes. Five 35 minutes? Five divided by seven is five. Yeah, five. So then it'll over five minutes. Because yeah, it's sorry about that. And, oh, well, look at that. I didn't even have to give Isla the feedback. She just got it. Boom. Okay. All right. So. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so we got five minutes, but we got to have a discussion. Like I had some questions about yeah, like how often do I have to watch, like look at my urine? But my presentation takes way more than five minutes. And if it's less than five minutes, we all need to speed talk. Speed yeah. talk faster. <laughs> Just put it on. on. Well, so my my, my presentation is over. like two minutes. So nice oh, speed talk. I can barely make out my words according okay. to mom. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's try. And then next time we'll have to come up with another solution. Maybe we break it up a little bit and we allow for like, you know, two different sessions. I don't know. Well, I but do think that five minutes is around a good presentation it is. time. But that's yeah. like the reason why we don't have much time is because we're already 20 minutes right. through the demo. So let's go ahead. Let's try to keep it to three keep main points. You don't necessarily have to read through everything, but there's yeah. a bit of a challenge, kids. Yep to try to convey the essence. And then if you felt like you weren't able to, you can always share next week too. Yeah. So let's go, who's next? Long, Who, and then we'll, oh wait, any feedback? We're, we're gonna give one minute for feedback for Isla. Who's got feedback? Real powerful, anybody? I can just say something go ahead. really quick. Well, one, I think kind of like 
doing a brief overview and then also adding more like pictures and like maybe things that are kind of like more engaging not showing p yeah i was gonna say not that not showing p but showing like the color like a color of oh, like wow in canva like a ye light yellow color you're hydrated and then like darker colors maybe drink, drink a bit more. more water yeah no, don't show actual p that would not be good dark yellow <laughs> giant emergency yeah right um, <laughs> but yeah it was very yeah I really enjoyed the project. I also liked how you included a lot of sources on the bottom of the project in case people didn't see. So then if you want to look more into it, then you can find where she got learned things from. Oh yeah. yeah. Another thought just for today, we can have folks write feedback in the demo day room. Oh yeah. Feedback write feedback in important. the demo day room. It's actually easier because it's taking us forever to get these up on YouTube anyway. Yeah. So write your feedback in the room while we go. And we'll focus on presentation time so you guys don't have to speed talk. Yay. Okay. All right. Who's next? Let me put it on 1.2 instead of two times. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna randomly pick people so we can just move. Yeah.